As flood waters that submerged parts of Nigeria gradually recedes, residents have beginning, are beginning to gain access to other parts of the state. Though the flood damaged the main bridge in Maiduguri, which connects to other parts of the state, reconstruction has since commenced to enable access and allow people go back to their normal activities. Senior reporter Jesse Tafida reports. This is the popular Lagos Bridge. It is where waters from Alo Dam passed through and poured into the state capital. Residents were cut off completely as the place was impassable. The violent surge of waters damaged the bridge. Now, water levels are down in most parts of the state and reconstruction of the bridge has commenced in earnest. For now, the bridge is open to only pedestrian traffic and out of bounds for vehicles. As life in Maiduguri slowly gets back to normal, ship owners and other residents count their losses. The government has promised to fix the bridge to ensure people are not cut off from moving from end of the city to the other. Jesse Tafida, TVC News, Maiduguri. And Governor of the state, that's Borono State Papa Ghana Zulum, has continued to receive sympathizers, this time from the United Nations delegation. The delegation says it has put in all measures in place to scale up its intervention towards bring in soccer to victims of the flood disaster. UN Assistant Secretary General and Humanitarian Resident Coordinator Mohamed Malik disclosed this when he visited the state governor. Alongside representatives of all UN agencies, national and international humanitarian organizations. According to him, the humanitarian crisis caused by the flood is huge and needs the support of all development partners to cushion the effects of the flood on the people. We wanted to have also our partner of every day, which are the non-governmental organization, national and international. But we wanted to have also the donor community. Because I think when we were listing the delegation, um, the presence of the European Union humanitarian branch is missed and ECHO is represented with us. Um, the German embassy, who is also part of the friend of foreign state, and we know their commitment is also part of us. And we had many more donors who wrote to me and said that because of short notice, they could not join the delegation. What we want you to know, uh, my brother, is that uh, we are all behind you. And also the Minister of Transportation, Seydou Al-Khali, was in Maiduguri to pay a sympathy visit on Governor Baba Ghana Zulum over the flood that washed away most parts of the state capital. The minister says his visitors to commiserate with the governor and people of the state over the floods that rendered over 500,000 people homeless. He assured of quick federal intervention to cater to the needs of victims of the flood disaster. A special prayer session was held during his visit. Hey, still to extend our condolences and sympathy for the tragedy of the flood disaster. It is indeed very catastrophic. Those who lost their lives and their properties, may Allah forgive their sins and replenish their wealth that they lost during this unfortunate incident. Agroclimatic resilience in semi-arid landscape in Benue State has donated 1,000 bags of rice and other commodities to internally displaced persons at Ichwa Camp in Makodi, the local government area of the state. 
The project coordinator discussed this. He also stated that the agency would extend the gesture to 14 other IDP camps across the state. Mayowa Okwato reports. Climate resilience in semi-arid landscape is a World Bank-assisted project aimed at addressing the challenges of land degradation and climate change in northern Nigeria on a multi-dimensional scale. They are here to distribute livelihood support materials to each our IDP camp, with gesture to be extended to other IDPs across the state. Project coordinator of Acrystal in the state explains the interest of the World Bank in the plight of IDPs and its desire to see that their sufferings were reduced. We are interested in seeing that our people are well taken care of, especially the IDPs in Benue State. We are here today to distribute uh, livelihood support materials, food items to each one camp. This is not going to stop here. We are going, we'll be embarking to, I mean, to another local government tomorrow. Now we have earmarked about 15 IDPs to support. It's going to be concurrent. More items given to IDP camps include 500 bags of beans, 200 bags of salt, 500 gallons of 4 liter palm oil, and 500 bags of gari. Beneficiaries shows gratitude. We are so so happy. We appreciate those people that donated for us. For them remembering those people which we are vulnerable. This item they are giving is for us, is for me to is for us to consume it, not to sell. Because we have been suffering of of suffering of hunger for quite a long a long time. Receiving the items on behalf of the Benue State Government. The Executive Secretary of Benue State Emergency Management Agency discloses more projects delivered to the state by ACRISAL. Apart from this uh, intervention of food items, they are also going to they have donated 50 units of uh, shelter, global shelter to the people of the local Aside from IDP camps, the ACRISAL also identifies with vulnerable groups like the widows and pensioners as a lot of them will be brought on board, making over 10,000 people to benefit from this intervention. Mayowa Okwanto, TVC News, Ichua. You're watching TVC News, so I will take a moment and then return with more stories. Just stay with us. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move weigh in the struggle of one to...